Happy Feedback Friday, everybody. It's a good day to be alive. I am here with Rob Hope of One Page Love and Email Love. I am super psyched to talk about Formula One. This is going to be sick. Look at these freaking amazing gifts. This episode is sponsored by Knack. With Knack, you can build your own really good emails in minutes, create incredible emails with their drag and drop email builder, and get them to market 10 times faster. No coding or agency required. It's the platform email geeks need now. The folks at Knack would love to show you how thousands of marketers build their emails every day. Check out the link below. I want to pimp something here for Rob. He didn't pay me for this, but I'm just psyched about it. I went through all 100 days and we all need to read this stuff. I am telling you about this because our audience is always looking for better ways to learn how to design. And I believe that emails are landing pages delivered. Learning about great design and strategy tips for landing pages are killer. Rob's got, you know, the book to boot. Get into these emails. It's uh, super helpful. Thank you for putting them together, Rob. I, again, I loved it. Great copywriting in it and great examples. Well done, dude. Thank you. I mean, it's interesting because when you promise 100 emails in 100 days, it may seem overwhelming, but I, I spend so much time stripping the email lessons down to their core. Sometimes you get two paragraphs and it's just a reminder about some fundamentals when it comes to design and I get so many replies still so it's an email drip you know if you sign up today you get hot tip one today hot tip two tomorrow you know hot tip 100 in 100 days and it's crazy because I set this up a couple months ago and I'm still getting replies someone replies to you know tip number 70 today going dude I really appreciate this one I'm like which one was that again sick yeah it's really cool and you and you'll be surprised at how many people got through the hundred it's really the appreciation of just cutting down lessons. People appreciate snackable bites of information. I agree, man. Especially these days. There's so much information, so much noise. Yeah, it's hard to break through. So speaking of that, how is this email working in that engagement? We've talked before about this idea that email is utility, minimum viable content, get it out there, say your thing, do it uh, with as few elements as possible. What's killing it for this uh, in that way in this email? We're always going to turn to GIFs to try and create a little bit of action in our emails. And, you know, they've nailed it. So this is a Formula One car. As it hits the chicane, the copy comes in. It's just remarkable. You know, like there's no email in your inbox that looks like this. It has all the same traits to watching a live race. Cameras everywhere, cars buzzing past. So it's reminding you about the action that's coming up. It's an excitement builder and so on. I tore this email apart a bit and it's quite interesting. You know, on the This Is Spa email, this GIF is 3.4 megabytes. Wow. You know, I want to actually just throw the question at you before we can go, we can go into more stuff that's working here. But, you know, Matthew, you know, what are you seeing out there? Like, where is the limit? Because this email is a 7.3 megabyte email. Damn. That's what you're loading on your phone. And the GIF itself is a 3.4 meg. Is it too much? It's such a hard question, right? So... Let's go into Matthew's story time. <laughs> you know, I quit drinking four and a half years ago. Life had to change. Things weren't working. And on that journey, I swear I'm going to get back to the point here. On that journey, I discovered this narrative of how rarely binaries work. Binaries being like, this is true. That is not true. This is right. That is not right. There are very few things in this world where that kind of binary thinking works or is helpful or serves people. And I think this is a good example. So one of the things that I think about here is who's the audience? Is somebody going to be looking at this email in a sub-Saharan Africa where there's no internet connection? Probably not, I don't know. That's the question, a 7.3 meg email, that's a lot for a little bit of communication. This team, that's putting this email together, they need to decide together, what is the limit? What is the bar? Could we accomplish this intensity and this like, this really exciting, you can almost hear that, wow, wow, you know, it's just jamming. You feel it, that's cool. Like that really gets me. Is it worth it? You just gotta figure it out with your audience. You know, like generally speaking, best practices, this is too big. So I would say that 7.3 megs is going to be pushing a limit that's on this far end. But is it serving their audience? Only they can know that. 
that's where I, I think, you know, there's no truism out there. There's no binary. Find out from your audience, but don't. Here's the thing not to do. Don't just put something out there and not check your analytics, not check to see how it was affected. Check in with your audience. Ask them a question. Find out, is this working? Is this annoying? You can either ask them in an email, like this email specifically, hey, was this was a big email. Did this suck or was it fine? You know, you can actually break the third wall and actually get into conversation with your audience. Or you can email 25 audience members and ask for an interview. You can give them a $10 Amazon gift card for something like that. Learn more about how your emails are serving them. Learn more about them as people. And the more that you get to, to know your audience, the more in relationship you can be with them. And the more vital that relationship is, the more loyalty you can garner for your brand. I just want to add three things out of this um, GIF that other email designers and creators out there can take. There's three things happening here that make this very unique in the sense that, you know, this could be a little square within the email, but it's not. It's full width. It's got this little bend at the bottom, which is part of the GIF, okay? So it feels just unique. You know, this is the Formula One brand aesthetic where it's got bends and turns everywhere, but they've included that in the intro. This uh, curve you're talking about, sorry to interrupt, it's right from this F, right? You feel it. The brand system has identified to use angles. See the, the angle of the yellow here? I think it's the same as the F here. And the, uh, and the one, you're spot on, dude. I didn't even notice that until you pointed it out. You feel it. Yeah, so it's super on brand. But another thing that, that I want to mention is that this header with the logo and the issue number is part of the GIF as well. And what this does is it creates this feeling that there's actually a car driving over the email. I know I'm being dramatic. They didn't have to do that. But this GIF is now, the whole image is taken over. And then the third thing is that they've actually included the flag colors, you know, within the type. So there's just so much in this intro. And that's exactly where the Formula One is going to be. You know, the copywriting, you love it, we love it. 20 gurgling beasts returning to the track. The copywriting is just on point when it comes to hype before the race. And it's like our call to action buttons, we can call that copywriting to, you know, get in the know, expert advice. This could just say click here. It doesn't. Every single thing is to is to do with creating hype. So again, when you're talking about with your team, what is the objective of the email? The top of the pyramid is hype. And we've got here Formula One cars coming and riding over the email logos. We've got good copywriting. We've got, you know, all th this is a very comprehensive email as well. You know, we've got little snippets, expert advice. If you scroll a little bit further, you'll see there's actually, um, I think, or maybe it was the other one. Just keep going down. So there's Mark Weber with his little, um, um, yeah, I love the big images. So here, yeah, look, infographics of the actual track. You get to see all the different turns. Yeah, it's, it's so what I want to say is that comprehensive, as a fan of Formula One, you want, you know, the nuances, you want the specific information. And yeah, this just delivers. It's comprehensive. As a fan, you are happy with this email. Ah, it's so consistent too. Notice this was interesting. They've got sort of a sub branded space happening here. It's almost like this. I think that's uh, got to be drawing on some Star Wars theming or something like that. Right. But it's, you feel this, um, you know, neon lightsaber and they, they go ahead and own it. Instead of using this same red here, they maintain that sort of brand uniqueness here. They, they've done a really nice job. Let's look at this other one. What are the things that you're seeing here again that are mimicked in this one? Yeah, brilliant. So you can see their design system. You know, they've got a massive document that they're just ticking with every send. This GIF, I'm actually not even sure how they created this. They're probably with some animation tools but yeah, that's a, that's a very impressive gift to start an email. It just shows speed. You know, that's a speed blur. Even the fonts like slightly blurred around the edges, meaning that you can't even read things um, because it's going so fast. So yeah, that is just super consistent with the other send. Colors are strong. Like if you scroll down this email, you see a very similar format. But again, look at this track. This Grand Prix is coming up in Austria and they're showing you this track that is exactly what you would like to know. So let's talk about positioning yourself 
you know, when you're about to start creating this email, the team gets together and they ask themselves, what exactly would a Formula One fan want to see in a fan email leading up to the race? And you know what you want to see? You want to see what are the, the noteworthy corners. Look here, last year, Verstappen tussled with Leclerc in turn four. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, I remember that. Sparking an old memory. So it's just, it's got these little like highlights. And this is like proper fan stuff, you know, because you're recalling old stories. You know, this is not for new Formula One fans. This is for real fanatics. I love it. And even if you're not on that level, you feel it and you're invited into that, right? There's so much that's happening here. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the weight, the file size, you know, of these emails. And, you know, the more time I spend in these, the more that I realize it's a trade-off. Think about what Formula One fans are doing on TV, right? They are spending a lot of time in front of a, a very visual experience. This brand is very visual. Yes, they support it with great copywriting. They don't let that you know, slide off. Also appreciate that they bring in live text as often as possible here. But you know, like they do something unique. This coded in an email would have been a very difficult thing to do. Would have been amazing. But like, okay, we're not gonna like go go to town on something like that, but we are gonna still use as much you know live text as possible they do that well they could pretty easily get a, a what's called a bulletproof button set up here where you know they could have that be live text i think if there's one thing other than increased live text which i'm always just going to be banging on about that i would love to see here would be just a little more refinement in terms of the use of different typography design style. So I talk about design golf and I think they could go one or two steps further in just dialing that in a little bit. Like I understand they have these sort of sub brand moments and they use like different fonts to, you know, break in with some of that kind of stuff. This is a different font than, you know, some of this up here. There's like some shared characteristics. They add a lot. And I think that's part of probably the brand but me personally, especially in an email, if there's anything you can do to keep uh, the email in sort of a utilitarian way of thinking, it's little stuff like uh, the grid. So there's a lot of different places in the grid. You've got left aligned. Now you've got sort of a uh, bizarre, not quite center aligned. Then this kind of unique lockup, left aligned again, right aligned again or this time, and then left aligned again, and then a little bit of different. Any of those things on their own is fine, but they add up to a lot of differences, and, and that just causes some friction, I think. So just something that I think from my perspective. Do you agree with that, Rob, or, or do you have a different perspective? No, I, I agree there for sure. You know, for me, there's, uh, you know, it's, I see this in landing pages as well, and it's so overlooked, and I'm not saying that this team isn't, you know, top design, but there's an inconsistency when it comes to vertical spacing. This is just something that happens in emails where, you know, we don't overlook it's it. It's so hard. It's so difficult. But if you look under the buttons, they're not all the same spacing. Um, you know, some of the headings. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to be um, harsh here. But uh, I think, you know, for what they've done, they've achieved quite a lot. You know, they're trying to make it comprehensive. They're trying to gain the hype. They've got their gifts. So there's some trade-offs here. Maybe there was time constraints. You know, maybe this email took 100 hours and, you know, that infographic they did of the track, you know, they, they said to themselves, okay, well, if we have 20 hours left of our time allocation, maybe let's attempt this. But they ran out of time and then they, now you ask yourself as an email team, you say, do we not include it because it's a, an image or do we include it as an image? And, you know, I think it's the right call, but it's just interesting. It's all trade-offs. That's right. That's a good way to put it. It is trade-offs. I think they've balanced out so much. And generally speaking, email teams are very small. To achieve this much with likely a small team, I think it's pretty impressive. Feedback Friday, folks, if there are other emails that are high quality like this that we should be reviewing, please submit them or just let us know on Twitter or Instagram, a really good email or really good emails. Twitter didn't allow us the S, <laughs> so we had to remove that. It's so good to have you on. Again, Rob, we'll have to do this again before too long. Oh, I'm keen. And, uh, dude, it's always just good to be with you. What are you going to get up to this weekend? Man, I think, you know, I've been working pretty hard. And, you know, like you were saying, 
that you were going to take a trip. Um, I think I'm going to also just spend some time in the ocean, you know, uh, hopefully get a few surfs mm. in and clock off, get a hard recess Sick. and then bang out the next week. Dude, uh, one of these days, I really want to come learn to surf with you. <laughs> that would Dude, be so sick. We have plenty waves in South Africa. Yeah, man. I grew up snowboarding so and skating, so like it's in my blood. I want to take that leap to learn the, the nuances that are surfing. I've heard it can help, but also it's an, its own thing. And uh, man, one of these days, it'd be tight. I've always wanted to get over to South Africa, so... Uh, well, dude, You're always welcome. Thanks, my man. Uh, it'll be good to catch up again soon. Uh, Feedback Friday, folks, email geeks. Thanks for being here. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Remember to be kind, be really good. And we will see you the next time. Peace. Ciao, guys.